Welcome to the Spartan by Squarespace. Uh, I think I might have done this voice before. I need some ideas for the episode, Kat. I need, I just, I can't really, can't think of anything. Maybe I should, uh, huh? The game? Yeah, that's, that's, that's an idea. We could talk about the, uh, the game. The, oh, that game. Well, your, your private game. We're not going to talk about that, Kat. That's, my game's a bit more family friendly. We're not talking about his game. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 73. I th Honestly, this little hesitation is, is always genuine. I never really know what episode it is. I think it's episode 73. Could be 74. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's all the same thing. So today is a special episode because I'm making a bead butt. Uh, special because obviously it's not special. I make lots of bead butts. This bead butt that I'm making today is actually for something. Uh, and it's actually for a game i'm developing a lot of you um through through the years have said like you should make your own game you should make your own game uh so i did i am it's nearly finished. it's pretty much finished it's nearly there i'm making a game with ben of apocrypha now uh, you can follow him on instagram he's the guy who made tonks uh, and you all liked tonks i like tonks which is the reason why i approached him uh, i really like the idea of like a single unit kind of arena game and the game's called bangarang in gutterlands that's like the little subtitle, which just means like loud noise, chaos. I think it's like a Jamaican word. Or the thing that Lost Boys say in Neverland, when directed by Steven Spielberg. But Tonks was an accessible game. You don't, you don't need a lot to play it. You need one unit, you need a couple of bits of terrain, a two foot by two foot table, you know, which is, you know, pretty manageable by most people's standards. You could play it with kids, play it with your wife, if you could talk them into it. That's what I wanted for my game. Basically, it's going to be robots smashing up other robots in the world of the Gutterlands. Now, I understand that some of you out there probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Gutterlands is this imaginary world that I've invented throughout all of my 73, 74 videos, giving all my builds, backstory, lore, things like that. So they all kind of connect together. And I kind of named the world Gutterlands because, you know, it's, it's kind of developed into a world now. And this game is going to be set in that world. You know, all, all the little weird creatures I've made We'll probably make an appearance. Weird things like uh, Meat Mountain and, and the plant. And look, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look, I've just gone and made made a website so you can just go and have a look. And you can, it's basically a Wikipedia website where you can just look up anything I've made and read a story about it. It's called thegutterlands.com. Uh, there, I just did that just then, just for you, because I could, I could see the confused look on your face. www.thegutterlands.com. Uh, if you ever sit there and watch my videos and just have no idea what I'm talking about, go to that website, have a look. You'll, you'll find it. It's uh, it's quite nice. It took me a long time to make. Um, I hope you enjoy it. What was I talking about? The game. No, not no my game, not your, not that game. The game is going to be out soon. It's not 100% complete yet. It's, it's pretty much there. We just need to make a really nice book, which is going to be free to download. The game's going to be free. But I'm not going to go into any details at the moment about the rules and all that stuff. Basically, it involves robots. And there's four different types of robots. There's the bead bots, which you probably you are aware of. There's the junk bots. Uh, there's the upper bots. And there's the meaty ones, right? So I'm not going to go into those yet. We'll talk about those later. But today, I'm just going to make a bead bot with the specifications you need for the game. So you can go off, make your own, in preparation for when the game's released. Uh, that's a bit presumptuous on my part. But uh, I need to make one anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to turn the camera on and make it and you can watch it if you want, I guess. Also in this game, you can change the weapons out. So I may think about magnetizing the arms of my bead, but, but you know, you'll see that later. This is going to be like that Tonk series where we build the Tonks, build the table, and then we play the game. It's going to be like that, but for Bangarang. Um, I think that's everything. I really, I should really make a list of everything I need to say, you know, maybe show an ounce of professionalism, professional professionalism professionalism you know i want to make a beat pop Thank <laughs> you. 
So as per usual, I'm going to do a few sketches. I like to sketch before I build. I've probably said this before, but you know, like it's just idea generation. I might not even build anything I sketch. It's just basically me warming up the old, the old noodle. You know, not that noodle, the one, the one up there, uh, not that one either. The, the brain, warming up the brain, um, not the head noodle, because um, that that could be misconstrued as something. The brain, yeah, I'm warming up the brain. First time viewers may be thinking, what the hell am I talking about? Look, look sometimes I just uh, think aloud and I record it into this microphone and it ends up on the video. Like a head noodle to me sounds like a penis head, you know, like a like I've got a thing on my head, like a, um, but I'm referring to the brain. I am warming up the brain. I'm just gonna stop talking about it now. Uh, I should probably talk about bead bots. Um, there's me drawing some bead bots, look. Now, I'm not going to say this is 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure I invented beatbots. You know, you could disprove me, I don't, I don't really mind. The reason why I made beatbots in the first place was because I didn't have miniatures. I didn't have any money to go to Games Workshop, spend uh, 200 quid on a, a Space Marine. I didn't have any money to do that. So I just wanted to make a miniature to paint. Uh, and I figured, you know, I've got beads, I've got some wire, I'll put them together, make a little, like a little cute robot thing. Um, and it kind of became its own thing. And people make beadbots with their kids and they send pictures of them to me. And I love it. I love seeing people's pictures of beadbots. I love the fact that, you know, it's quite accessible for most people to do. Uh, it's like I've got little bead babies everywhere. I just realized I haven't actually talked once about what I'm drawing. Basically, I'm just designing beadbots. I'm just gonna go through a few little sketches and, and decide what kind of beadbot body I want. I think I'm gonna go for that one, uh, you know, second row, middle one, this one here, um, because I like it. I like the little vent on top. And I'm gonna design a few different arms that can be attached magnetically to the wrists, because this game requires you to swap out weapons. So uh, that's what we're gonna build today. Um, it's not the best drawing I've ever done, I'm gonna be honest, but you know. It's a bead boy now. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a website where you go to make websites. Now if you have no idea how to make a website, you don't know how to do with a HTML, is it HTML? I'm not sure. And you just want to make a website about things like, you know, like a pickle website, for example. Like yeah, yeah, like that. Like pickle perfection. That's it, Bill. Click there. Uh, if you just want to make a website that's quick and easy and clean and nicely designed, then go to Squarespace. Uh, I made this website in like, you know, it must have been like 0.5 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure, but it was really easy and it looks pretty good. And I will add stuff to it at some point. But uh, yeah, if you want to make your own website, there's a sale going on at Squarespace. There's a little link down below. Go and have a look after the episode, obviously. First off, I'm going to start with a base and I'm going to finally get a chance to use these poker chips. Now I picked these poker chips up in the US of A in a, a big giant dollar tree, like a pound land, but much bigger and everything costs just over a dollar, which is a bit bit weird, but uh, it was quite an experience for me. Got a star coming in? Yes, ma'am. I'll put a link to that video just up here, but uh, we're going to use poker chips because uh, my game requires you use a 40 millimeter base. So this miniature is 28 millimeters. It basically means from its feet to its eyes, it's 28 millimeters tall. Now these bead bots are going to be much taller than humans. Uh, they're big worker bots. Uh, so I'm going to draw a really, really crap template on this piece of card. Come on, get out of the way. So there's my template, let's uh, measure it. It's about 60 millimeters tall by about 40 millimeters wide. Now it doesn't have to be exact when you make your own, but as long as it sits on one of these poker chips nicely, it's fine. Now this is a better quality poker chip that someone sent me in my PO box. Uh, I'm gonna use that because it's just much nicer. 
Now, as you're probably aware, I do have lots and lots of beads. I've got lots of bit boxes full of all sorts of weird little plastic shapes. And I'm going to try and bring out as many of those as I can in this episode. Uh, but, you know, start collecting beads and little plastic shapes. That's my recommendation here. That's my homework for you this week. Now you need a, a little pin vise drill or any kind of drill really, but I've, I, I did go a bit fancy pants and I bought one of these on Amazon. I think it was pretty cheap. Uh, it's just an electric drill. It's not strong enough to actually drill anything significant, but it should be good enough for beads. Uh, and yeah, look, it spins it around like that. That's probably my fault really. So you've probably seen me make bead bots before, you know, because I'm a bit of a one trick pony, uh, but it requires drilling lots of holes and threading lots of wire. Now, this makes the bead bot really strong, so you shouldn't really forego this step. Always drill your holes and try and thread wire through as many little holes as you can. Uh, it's a good little metaphor for life. No, it isn't. Not all, really. Uh, this is another bead box full of all weird little plastic shapes and beads. Uh, there's another one. I'm just showing them off now. I'm just flexing. So I need to make that weird little cover over the vent on top of my bead bot, and I'm going to use this little stud thing. I think you stick these studs into denim jackets to look extra cool. Um, I did wear a denim jacket and a pair of jeans to school when I took my kid on a school run once and uh, one of the parents called me double denim. Um, but you know, who's laughing now? So a quick tip, if you're going to thread wire through beads, make sure you use a lot of wire and there's lots of excess that you can trim off later. It doesn't matter how long the legs or the arms are, you can always trim them back, but don't thread too little through, just like that, because, uh, well, just like that. Uh, this is another one of my bits boxes, but of all sorts of weird places. I think there's some Monopoly houses and hotels in there. I don't know what I'm going to use those for. It's definitely not Monopoly, because uh, I can't stand Monopoly. So we need to bulk out these shoulders and the arms. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of like when you go to the gym, you know, and then you, you just pull your beads out. Actually, I'll, I'll retract that statement. Don't pull your beads out at the gym. Please don't pull your beads out at the gym. It's just uh, it's kind of frowned upon these days. We're going to make some knee joints for the uh, the bot there. What are knee joints for robots? I guess they're like hinges. Knee hinges? Ninjas? 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 Probably just knee joints. So I'm going to start pretty simply with the arms. I don't want to go too detailed because, you know, we can add detail later. I want these arms to be magnetized. I want to be able to change the hands out. So we're just going to put a couple of beads on here and uh, stick one of these little tiny magnets. They're tiny. I think they're like two millimeter. You could probably go bigger uh, because I did lose a few of these. I'm going to be honest. Uh, once you drop a magnet, just, just give up because you'll, you'll never find it again. So here we are, this is the basic bead bot body. This is my structure. You know, that is, in my opinion, the most boring part of the build. Now we get to add loads of details. This is the fun bit. We're gonna add some greeblies. Um, so it's gonna get more interesting, honestly, I promise. Hello everyone, this is me interrupting myself to just tell you to, uh, you know, like the video, uh, comment on it, interact. You know, I do read all the comments. Uh, so if you comment, I might, might respond. You'll definitely get a heart, because uh, he's on that. Or if you don't if you don't like the video, then click the thumbs down. That's fine. Uh, that's all right with me. But if you do really like it and you'd love to see me make more videos, you want this to be a sustainable YouTube channel, then consider going to Patreon and uh, just throw me a few quid every month. It's like I like your stuff, Bill. I'll buy you that curly whirly. But I do have to make it clear I'm not spending the money on curly whirlies. Okay, it's for all this stuff that I use to make stuff. Um, I did buy a curly whirly once. It was a tax write-off and, you know, um, it was for a project. I'm not incriminating myself. This, this You're allowed to buy curly whirlies once in a while. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, join Patreon if you like this channel, if you like what I do. Uh, it really does help. It really keeps the, the lights on. I, I've got a lot of lights in here. So at this point, I'm just looking for anything that looks kind of like a weapon, like uh, any pointy sticky things. 
So I considered using one of the little toy guns as my gun, but then that's that's just too easy for me really. I'm gonna make my own gun using tubes and stuff. Now this plastic is that kind of plastic that doesn't stick well. So if you just give it a quick blast with a little blow torch like this, uh, it becomes a little bit more pliable. So this is an old fountain pen nib I found. I'm gonna use that thing at the end there as a gun barrel because it's pretty cool. It was pretty hard to cut. I think it may have been metal, but you know, it's cut now, it doesn't matter. We're gonna use the drill to make these little gun vent things. I know they don't really technically make any sense, but they just look cool, you know? And this is a toothpick. I've bought a pack of these from Amazon. They were gonna be Ruster Spears. Now, if you don't know what Rusters are, go to our website. But, uh, you know, that's what they were gonna be. And this is just a little gun clip. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna list every single thing I use in this video because that'll get quite tiresome. But basically, I'm making a little magnetic gun that just connects uh, on his arm, just like that. Oh, so satisfying. This is a sheet of really thin EVA foam. Now, I always talk about EVA foam because it's like the best material in the world. Uh, I never really understood what EVA foam was for. Like, I always used to see it in crafting shops. Obviously, it was for bead butts. I mean, I, I just didn't know that at the time. Um, they, should, they should probably buy that on the packet. So I'm going to make a little bead bot hand um, with wire and this bead and some smaller beads. Now hands are hard, claws are easy, but we're not making claws today, we're making a hand. So be quiet Bill, stop referencing early videos. Now threading these little tiny beads on this little tiny wire is pretty tricky. I mean, I do have giant sausage fingers, despite what you think. I mean, the camera's not even that close up. That's a wide angle lens, I've just got big fat fingers. Here's the gun, uh, just for comparison. Basically, I'm gonna make these little EVA foam lips over each hand attachment, just so they blend in with the model a little bit more, but you'll see more of that later. Now in the rules for the game, there is a bashing weapon you can make. Now it's not very specific what sort of bashing weapon, but I'm gonna go for like a big sledgehammer hand. Uh, I'm gonna use these little pegs from, I think that was a travel battleships game. I know, I've got so much plastic crap, I'm gonna be honest. And I'm gonna use some of these little wooden hexagons that someone sent me. I have no idea who sent me these, but you know, I've used them quite a lot. Uh, they're pretty good. Uh, I do like them, so thank you very much, whoever sent that. You know who you are. Maybe you don't. Do any of us really know who we are? Really? If you think about it? I mean, I do, I, I'm Bill. I'm Bill for making stuff. But, you know, maybe maybe you don't. Um, so I promised I wouldn't get too deep in this episode. There's a hammer. <laughs> Look, he's got a hammer. No, I have no idea what this thing is. This is probably some really rare thing for a Lego Bionicle or something. But I'm just going to use that little bit of it. And this is a little pen nib thing. The little bit that goes over the pen nib. And this is going to be a flamethrower. So I think this thing is from a pen as well. Uh, I do have lots of old plastic pens. Uh, you know, like your mother used to say, keep all your old plastic pens to use for your bead butt. She didn't say it to you, she said it to me. But uh, you know, she did say it. And there we go, flamethrower. I'm really happy with that one. That's gonna paint up nicely. That's just, uh, uh, yes. I like that, it's nice. Oh, that's nice. And there we go, four attachments for this episode. I'll probably make more later. <laughs> so it's Greebly time, uh, not Greeble time, despite how it's spelled. Uh, it's, you know, it's named after Greg Greebly, the guy who invented sequins. Uh, I don't know if that's true, you could look that up. But this is the fun part of the build when we add loads of details. Now we're gonna use some EVA foam first and just give him a few armor plates, some shoulder pads, things like that. Make him look a little bit harder. And that's why I love EVA foam. Look, you can just bend it to any shape you want. Cut it to any shape. Uh, once you prime it, it's solid. It's like plastic. You can cut into it. You can weather it. It's just, you know, I love it. Just go buy some EVA foam. Go on, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait here. I don't own stocks in EVA foam, despite what people say in the comments. And, you know, I may have an annoying voice, 
but you know when you keep typing like that, that that typing sounds pretty annoying as well so i'm just just just, just saying okay just saying So just like the game of tonks, if you aim at someone's back, you're more likely to hit them. So basically the back is the vulnerable spot. So I want to make a backpack for this bot that's like a power pack, I think. Just something that would represent something more vulnerable and uh, will look cool. Uh, but something that would look more vulnerable on his back. I don't know what these things are. I think they might be like power coils. Maybe those little orbs from Zola Vines. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my website. There you go, a rivet montage, kind of. Not quite as good as previous, but that doesn't matter. Look, uh, we have some rivets. I love rivets, nearly as much as I love EVA foam. This is a cake pop stick. When people used to make cake pops, you remember that? I'm gonna use this as a little exhaust on the back. Do you remember when I said I was gonna make little lips out of EVA foam? Uh, not actual lips, but you know, little bits that uh, stick over the weapon so they blend in with the arm better. That's what I'm doing now, basically. So it's time to add some eyes. Beadbots have two eyes, uh, and these are two hemispherical rhinestone things. I think they're from like now art kits. If you look up now art stuff on Amazon, you'll find all sorts of weird little rhinestones and beads and shapes. And I mean, there's so much crap for now art. I think Green Stuff World should get on it and sell it as uh, you know beadbot eyes. They might do that. They they do tend to uh, just repackage things and sell them off as crafting supplies. This is an old guitar string. Uh, I've got lots of old guitar strings thanks to my guitar man contact in the guitar shop. I'll assume he plays guitar. I mean, can you work in a guitar shop and not play guitar? I don't know if that's allowed. And some generic holiday wire. Now it's coming up to the generic holiday time. Look out for this stuff in your pound land. Uh, I do have quite a bit. I did stock up. Um, but hopefully they still sell it. I don't know if they do, but it's the best stuff. They're like hanging cables and things like that. And there we go. That is the Greeblies done. I look. I, th I think it looks pretty good so far. But just before we prime it, we want to just add a few little dents in there, a few little cuts. Uh, just use a little scalpel and just dig at it. You know, not too many, like what I'm doing just there. Just enough, not too many. I did that as a, a demonstration on how to do too many nicks and dents and stuff. So you don't do it at home, but let's prime it. So I primed the thing in Poundland spray paint primer. Now it's gone up to £2.50. Uh, they want to get on that. That's just getting a bit ridiculous. And these little things here were pretty hard to prime, but I, I managed it. Now we're going to use some burnt sienna paint, really watered down. This is my usual kind of rust undercoat thing that I do. Just basically really watered down acrylic burnt sienna. Nothing really too special there, but it looks pretty good to be honest. But look, we don't want to hear about me talking about painting. Painting time with Bill is boring time with Bill. Boring time with Bill is story time with Bill. I think that's the slogan. So I guess I should take this opportunity to talk about Bangarang. Uh, what this bot is for, you know, the, the game that I'm making, Bangarang in Gutterlands. If you don't know what Gutterlands is, please go to uh, gutterlands.com. Um, there should be a link down below. Basically, you can learn about all this stuff I'm talking about. But Bangarang is basically, imagine robot jocks mixed with Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome set in a town of respite and the surrounding areas. Bangarang is basically Respite's uh, main source of entertainment, like the old gladiator arenas of Rome. You know, not anymore, they're, they're crap. Nothing happens in them anymore, they're pretty boring. But you know, back in the day. Bangarang is available to anyone in Respite. If you can build a robot or you have a bead bot sitting around, you can armor him up, stick a few weapons on him, chuck him in the arena and uh, fight for some, you know, credits or trade or just glory. It's just basically a bit of fun. It's like Robot Wars, you know, but you'd have to go to the rusty peaks and salvage old robot parts instead of going to like Maplin. I just realized Maplin is an English thing. Think, think Radio Shack, but more British. 
Now there's no real factions in uh, Bangarang, but there are like types of bots. Now there's bead bots, which are your kind of usual uh, service bots. They clean things, they repair things, and they're kind of, you know, cute and lovable. They're kind of friendly looking, so the kids don't like reel in horror as they screech up the pavement. So for the less fortunate people of Respite and the surrounding areas, if you don't have a bead bot available, uh, you can make yourself a junk bot, salvaging junk from the rusty peaks and, you know, anywhere on Tapu. And you can build yourself a bot basically out of junk. They tend to be really rusty. They're, they're kind of the favorites for the, uh, the ruster supporters in town. Some people like to experiment with biological weapons like bio drones and things like that. They, they would mess around with tumor tonks and tumor fiends and they would take the parts and make their own bio weapon robot out of it. Like a, they call them the meaty ones. They're basically disgusting meaty robots that can regenerate, you know, and they, but they're very delicate and they're very sensitive to the sun and very kind of creepy looking. And then the final kind of bot you can have is an upper bot. The uppers are basically that, they're the, they're the upper class. They're the, the posh people that come and tour respite, you know, just for fun. You know, and they, they take a little trip around the Gutterlands and they have the money to pay for the best parts. They pay for alien tech and their bots are really sleek and almost like Giver looking, if you know that anime. Like they, they're just really sleek, really weird and alien looking. But the pilots, uh, you know, they're not very good. They're, they've got no experience. They tend to cry a lot and want to go home. So there we go. I've just listed the kind of bots you can use in Bangarang. Now today, we obviously, I made a bead bot. But next week, I might make another one. Let me know if you want to see that. And you can maybe vote on which one you want to see by joining Patreon. Uh, but that's it for now. Thanks. Yeah, here we are. Here's my bead bot. I don't have a name for him yet, as I'm terrible at naming things, as you can probably tell by my Gutterlands website. But yeah, look how satisfying these little boop, boop. And then I'm, I know I'm gonna lose these other little weapons at some point. I gotta be honest, it's probably the best bead bot I've ever made, I think, um, just proportion wise, and actually spent a while painting it. Um, I was gonna paint all sorts of weird decals on him and stuff, but then me and Ben got talking, we're like, wouldn't it be cool if in the game, the more battles you win, the more kind of decals your character gets. Like, uh, you know, if you win a battle, you get a little white stripe. You know, you win two, two stripes. If you kill five other bots in matches with a flamethrower, you get a little nice little flame symbol on your shoulder. Things like that. Little uh, kind of honorary glyphs, like gutterland glyphs. So that's why I've left him playing. I want him to earn his stripes. Plus, I was a little bit lazy and I couldn't be bothered. But no, I think that's a better idea. What do you think? Let me know down below. Uh, if you like it, we'll chuck it in the book. Uh, which should be ready soon for free. You do have to watch my videos though. If you read the book, that's just, it's like a whole legal thing. But anyway, what do you think? Uh, give me a comment. If you build your own and you want to show me, just tag me on Instagram. Go follow Ben on Instagram, apocrypha underscore now. I would just write on the screen, but that's it. Glamour shots coming up. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. And there we go, there is my bead bot all armoured up and weaponed up for Bangarang. Now, I hope this game sounds fun to you. It's, it's definitely, well, it is fun. We've had a lot of people on Patreon playtesting it and they all seem to really enjoy it. Uh, it's it's going to be ready very, very soon. We're just doing that final little tweak. But I've got to say, this is probably my favourite bead bot I've ever made. I think it's uh, it's quite it's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite a nice bead bot. What do you think? Let me know down below. Give me comments. And you know what? Why don't you just go and uh, join this lot? Yeah, patrons. They're the best people on the planet, patrons. They really are. They, um, I don't know why they are. They're, they're, they're probably because they give me money to keep the channel going. But that's that's good enough reason. I love